Hello, BookTube. About uh, 50 years ago, the New York Times Book Review had a front cover feature on Marcel Proust and his incomprehensible, mind-boggling book, uh, In Search of Lost Time, then commonly known as Remembrance of Things Past. Uh, and one of the writers of that piece did a really good job of describing the particular mental place that this book, and it is one book, it's 50 jillion pages long, but it's one book, uh, has in the reading mind of most readers, even most dedicated readers. Uh, the piece went, perhaps one day soon we shall find ourselves pleasantly immobilized, comfortably hammocked, or mildly ill, one day when the guns are gone and the looters are out of the suburbs, when all the threats that have been withdrawn, and time lies as empty in our hands as an office present, then, perhaps, I won't say we shall read Proust again, but then, perhaps, we may make a start. <laughs> That's what most readers think, I think. Remembers of Things Past has become synonymous with the gigantic white whale you are never going to catch. And unlike other white whales, War and Peace, for instance, or the, the origin of the whole term, Moby Dick, with Remembrance of Things Past, quite often the dedicated readers that I have known for whom it is a white whale off on the distant horizon have been kind of okay with never catching it. They actually feel active guilt about War and Peace or Moby Dick, but not this. <laughs> this is just something, yeah, I don't know that I'll ever have the time. Maybe when, when everything's quiet and the guns have silenced and I'm sick in a, or in bed or in a hammock or something, maybe then it'll be time not to read the whole thing, but maybe to make a start. <laughs> of course, this is not the case for dedicated fans of Remembrance of Things Past. There are them, and there are some, and they are, they are cadre. They are every bit as dedicated and passionate as the dedicated fans of James Joyce's Ulysses. Uh, they know every detail. They know how it maps onto Proust's own life uh, and how it doesn't, the key ways that it doesn't. Uh, and even I've heard rumors that there are some French fans of this book who have large chunks of it by memory. Uh, I have read it, uh, but I have never loved it. And I've never really got what was going on that would make it lovable. I rag all the time on this channel about... Uh, unreadable epics that people claim to love, uh, like James Joyce's Ulysses, but there's a handful of others that I'm sure come to mind when I bring up the subject. And in all of those cases, although I don't like those books, and I can tell you why, I can itemize objectively, critically, why they stink, I can still read them and think, okay, well, I can see why someone would like this, even though it's fraudulent. And even though they're mistaken or lying about it, I could see there are things here that might work on a completely different kind of reader, on a completely different wavelength of reading. And I've never got that. <laughs> with the remembrance of things past, with, with uh, In Search of Lost Time, I have never got that. Uh, and so it, it definitely acts for me, as it does for everybody else, maybe in a slightly different way, uh, as a white whale. Because it's this thing out there. It, it, for me, it, mentally, it sits in the same space as the novels of Charles Dickens, where I know I'm supposed to like them. I can see that they are likable. I understand that people like them, and I do not, no matter how many chances I give them. Uh, and I was like, like those other readers that I mentioned. I was kind of okay with that. <laughs> Life is short, after all. I was kind of okay with not grappling once more with Remembrance of Things Past, which is why I made a running joke a couple of years ago on this channel about a massive event, <laughs> about, about Proust Tober becoming, uh, Proust Tember becoming Proust Tober and then Proust Vember and then Proust Sember and whatnot. Uh, and, uh, I never actually went through with that. I, I quickly lost all will to live when I even thought about it. Uh, and over the years, over those the, the months that, I've, that that gag has been hanging in the air, a number of you have emailed and said, you know, I know this is a joke. I, I know that you that you either never meant to do this or you quickly decided to change your mind. But still, the idea of going through Remembrance of Things Past, if I'm not going to do it because BookTube helps me through it, I'm never going to do it. That that idea has an appeal, and I agree with that. I especially agree with the BookTube part of it. This is a fantastic community. 
that we have here. It's weird. It's odd. It shouldn't exist. Uh, and I firmly believe that in 30 years, when all of us look back at our lives, first of all, I don't believe that anything like this will still be around. And second, I think that all of us will look back and say, yeah, that was that great time. That was that great 15-year period where I was booktubing, either as a viewer or making my own videos or both. That I was booktubing and wasn't that great. For one interval in my long, long reading life, reading was absolutely not solitary, and I loved it. Uh, I firmly believe that we will all think that or those of us who live that long will think that. Uh, so that element of that of those slight guilt trips, I understood. That, it, you know, I this is a white whale for me also. These people would write and say, this is a white whale for me also, and the only way I'm ever going to get past it is with my friends on BookTube, uh, my imaginary friends on BookTube, because most of us have not met most of our viewers. But we're all real, and we're real to each other, and we're real to you, so... I understand that. That makes perfect sense. It wasn't enough. <laughs> it wasn't enough to push me over the precipice at all. Uh, then I saw an announcement, and I'd already had wind of it on Voxer from Greg at another Bibliophile Reads. He has decided that he is not going to let this be a white whale any longer, and that he and a select group of other people are going to read Remembrance of Things Past in 2025. Now, the details are still nebulous. I'll leave a link to his video. The details are still nebulous as to who is involved, and also is in, in terms of what kind of schedule. I mean, what kind of schedule he, could you possibly have for this thing? It goes on and on and on and on and on. Uh, famously, it does. Famously, it takes 220 pages for the main character to get out of bed. Uh, Greg, in his video, theorizes about two tracks for this, uh, reading it fast and reading it very slow, reading it 10 pages a day. And really thinking about that, really letting it sink in. And I would like to think that in the time between now, it's half a year between now and when this thing kicks off, I'd like to think that between now and then, that vagueness will shake out into a plan. And I think the obvious plan here is to read it slow, savor it. If you're going to do it, and if you're going to do it in the best reading company you're ever going to have, you might as well take your time and really think about it. I don't know if that will end up being true. There might end up being two tracks. Of course, I don't make any plans that cross the Terminator into a new year. I don't know if I'll be on BookTube. I don't know if I'll be reading. And if so, if I'll be reading in English. I have no idea. Uh, I don't make any plans. I don't hold over any momentum at all. So, but I can still dream. And I, I imagine this as not just for you, but also for me, the perfect way to grapple with a white whale. If I were involved in this event, my number one question would be, do I read this thing in English or do I read it in French? Under the assumption that, uh, that I am never going to read it again. <laughs> Under the assumption that if I do it with all these people in the whole, in the whole year of 2025, I'm never going to do it again. Uh, because I don't imagine that I'm going to enjoy this book even if I read it again in great company. I've already given it a couple of tries and I don't enjoy it. Whatever the author is doing, I, don't, I know what he's doing, but I don't enjoy it. And I don't fancy that I will. And that's not just because there are no giant killer sharks, okay? <laughs> that's not just for that reason. It, it strikes me as doing virtually a laundry list of things that I don't like fiction to do. Uh, I, I haven't decided that mainly because, as odd as this is going to sound, I, have, I am a lifelong fan of English translations of works from other languages. Not just the books that they translate, but the whole fun interesting activity of translating. I am a fan. I collect English translations of things, even when it's a book that I can read and infinitely prefer in the original. I still collect and love to talk about and write about English translations. Uh, and In Search of a Lost Time has had a very, very famous English translation. It's had many, and uh, an academic publisher just finished up with, with its own, but it has the the Moncrief translation is the the one that actually gave it the title Remembrance of Things Past is a very famous English translation. I I would probably want to read that if I were going to read it in English, but I don't know. I, it, if I'm reading a, a, a stylist like Proust, if I'm reading him in English, I am not getting what he wrote. I, I, or am I? <laughs> I don't really know because I just I just reread a huge chunk of Les Misérables in. French and 
the translations, if anything, improved it. <laughs> so, so I don't know. The, the event itself is vague, and I am vague, but I wanted to put it on your radar, even this far out, when even the details have not been worked out. This is not even an event yet. It doesn't have a name yet. I'm hoping that it, the name is not Proust in 2025. I'm really hoping that it's not. The book is boring enough as it is. It doesn't need a, it doesn't need a boring name. Uh, but it, we're well in advance here. I wanted, to, I wanted to put this on your radar, and I'll leave a link to Greg's video, even though I can't say that I will participate because you might want to. Whether I'm involved or not, you're still going to have the best reading company for this giant Gallic monstrosity that you're ever going to have. No matter who ends up being involved, of course, the dream scenario here for this for this thing would be if it became an absolutely gargantuan event. If a, if a hundred, imagine if a hundred booktubers pitched in to read this thing in the year of twenty twenty five. Imagine if that ended up being true. Imagine how epic that would be if you had booktubers from all all the different kinds of reading that everybody does. All of, imagine if everybody got involved in this. What an amazing thing that would be. But the smaller versions of that would also be amazing. And that's going to be available to you whether I'm here or not, whether I participate or not. So I wanted to put it on your radar as well to maybe buck yourself up. If you're like a lot of readers out there, this thing has been on your mind and maybe on your guilty conscience for the whole of your reading life. Maybe you tried Swan's Way and were rightfully repulsed. <laughs> maybe you're thinking, oh, I should really try that again someday. Well, here's your chance, bub. <laughs> you're never going to get a better chance. So, so I will leave a link. To Greg's video, think about it. That's all I'm saying is think about it. If this turns, if this shakes out to we're not, we're gonna, we're not gonna hurry. We're gonna take our time and really absorb this, so that it's ten pages a day. That's doable. Uh, that's doable. And ten pages a day, uh, that's a lot. <laughs> that may be enough to get you through the whole thing by the time the year is over. Especially if you factor in the fact that you're going to take days off. Uh, we don't know. No idea what shape the event is going to take, but think about it. If you're like a lot of readers that I know, this book preys on your mind. And you're never going to be hammocked or mildly ill. <laughs> and the, su the suburb is never going to be quiet. You're never, the outside world is never going to urge you to do this. Might as well take the bull by the eclair and do it yourself. <laughs> so let's, let's just think about it for the rest of the year and see what 2025 brings. Uh, so I'll wrap this up, and I will see you soon. Thank you, BookTube.